Hi everyone, in this video we're going to analyze the aerodynamics of a sports car using CFD or computational fluid dynamics simulations. And for that we're going to use the automated Airshaper online platform. Let me show you how it's done. You simply drag and drop a file onto the upload menu, you give it a name and you click the next button. So once this process has finished, you'll be able to see your own 3D model just in your browser without installing software. And you need to just point the car into the wind in its neutral driving position without any yaw angle and then hit the set reference button, which means all frontal area calculations and so on will be done with respect to this position. Then you just need to set up a number of basic, th basic things like whether it's on the ground or above the ground. This will be for drones, so we're just gonna leave it on the ground. We can toggle between static, which is the object standing still, wind moving across, or standstill wind and the object moving through the wind, which is the case for the car, which means that behind the scenes in the CFD simulation, a moving ground will be applied to the virtual wind tunnel. And that virtual wind tunnel is being constructed around the car and dynamically sized so that the blockage ratio, which is the size of the, wind, uh, size of the car versus the size of the wind tunnel, is as low as needed. Then let's specify the velocity. Imagine this car is going 180 kilometers per hour. We have set the rotation. We can select the units just to make sure. Once you select the units below the viewer, you can see what the dimensions are and that's it. And then what we want to do is actually set the wheel rotation of the car. So if you hit the wheels button, the software will automatically detect the wheels which means the central axis of rotation for each wheel is detected. It also calculates the radius and by combining the radius with the speed of the vehicle, it can actually calculate the RPM of each tire. So you don't need to set that yourself. If you want, you can still go in and edit the selection. Like in this case, I want to exclude the calipers. So I just hit the edit button on every wheel. I move around the car the other side, go to this wheel, same thing. And then the last one is just here at the front. Edit this one out as well. That's it. And th that was all we needed to do for the wheel selection. Optionally, you can also inc increase the realism of a CFD simulation by adding radiators. Now, a radiator is typically modeled as a porous element. So if I hit this radiator, I can see it's actually hidden inside the car. This is a curved one, actually, which is also possible as long as it's watertight. The only thing you need to do for this, to specify how much resistance the software needs to apply to this is to provide two points on the pressure drop curve. The pressure drop curve is actually the data that indicates how much pressure drop, which is delta P, you have for a certain velocity. And if you notice for two points on the pressure drop curve, the software can automatically fit the curve through it and calculate all the other points needed for the simulation. So imagine you have 10 pascals of pressure drop at one meters per second, and for two meters per second, we have 30 pascals of pressure drop. That's the only thing we need to set. And that's it. So on the next page, you can just order, select the accuracy, so you can choose between 1 million cells, which is very low resolution, doesn't come with any report or rotating wheels, but it's very good to just compare very initial concepts. You can also switch to 10 million cells, which will increase the resolution by a factor 10. You'll get a full PDF report, there's more details included, there's rotating wheels, radiators and so on. And very good for conceptual analysis, comparing detailed designs. And prior to going to a wind tunnel, for example, you can really crack down and find the last details using a very high resolution simulation with up to 100 million cells. Now, once you hit the next button and start your simulation, everything will run in high performance cloud computing. And once you get the CFD results, it's a matter of converting that data into visuals and data performance stats that you can actually use to improve your performance of the car. So let's have a look at which visuals Airshaper provides and how we can actually use those to interpret what's happening with the flow. So this is what the results look like. So if we zoom in on the car, the first thing that we see is what is called the 3D pressure clouds, which is technically a total pressure coefficient isosurface with a value of zero. In normal terms, this means that within these red clouds, you're actually losing quite a lot of energy. It's not that outside of these clouds you're not losing energy at all, but it is a good indication as to where the biggest sources of energy loss are located. For example, on this car, uh, which is one I designed 14 years ago, so it's not too modern anymore, but there's this pocket in between the headlights and the bodywork where the air gets trapped and it needs to get out which means that if you look at the top view, the air wants to get out of the cavity, but it needs to curve around this sharp edge of this headlight. So this causes flow separation, which translates into this um, red pressure, pressure cloud here. 
I had a small design feature here on the bonnet. Um, so as the air needs to um, actually dive inward or downward, uh, just past this edge, there's a little bit of throw separation, but the high pressure air pushing the air against the bonnet actually squashes it again and, and makes the flow reattach. If you move actually to the underside of the car, you'll see that there's a large zone of separated flow here, energy loss, and that is because this front splitter is too aggressive. Uh, very often people generate or design a splitter which is perfectly flat sticking out. That's nice, but if it's really close to the front face of the car, let's say, um, which is where you have the high pressure, this high pressure air needs to evacuate left, right, top or bottom. And if it goes to the bottom, there's almost a 90 degree bend. And then there's another 90 degree bend around this edge. And actually the air has too much momentum and it dives underneath this front splitter, goes too low and then curves up again, which means it creates a natural curvature. But within that curved uh, area, let's say, you have flow separation and recirculation. Something you can also see when you look at the surface friction. Um, there's reattachment in this area where the flow goes forward here and flow reattaches and goes backward from that point on again. So if you continue with the 3D pressure clouds, we can also see that the wheels, obviously, as always, are a big source of drag. And that is why a lot of people install air curtains, which is like a scoop here in the front bumper, which then um, ejects high speed air to kind of cover or form literally a curtain of air around the wheels. Um, so modifying the wheels, shielding them or adding like a smooth cover to them is actually really important. If you then move on to the A-pillar, which is this part here, uh, which divides um, the entire greenhouse, glasshouse uh, between the front windshield and the side um, windshields. Here you can see that there's a small bit of flow separation. The air curves around this edge and because this edge or this window has a little bit of an inset, the air needs to actually jump across that edge and creates a bit of flow separation. Now, the bigger problem here is that I have added um, like this design element to design this fixed window from this window which can move actually downward and it's sticking out way too much uh, and because it sticks out that sticks out that much you get flow separation in an area which is already sensitive because the air is curving around this area and has a slight low pressure because it's speeding up and then you're disturbing it and that causes flow separation. What's also interesting to see is that you have an upward motion of the air. So the air actually curves around the A-pillar, which, which makes it tumble and then curl around and upward around um, the rest of the car. Uh, and because you disturb the flow, um, this actually triggers a lot of flow separation. If we go to the mirrors of the car, um, what we see here is that uh, the mirrors are causing drag, but it's actually quite okay. The spacing between the mirror and the car is uh, fairly large, uh, so the interference between the two is limited. But even then, you can still optimize the mirror, taking into account the local flow pattern of the car, um, because there's a very big difference between the aerodynamic performance of a mirror isolated in the flow or actually in the local flow pattern around the car. So very important to optimize the mirrors in combination with the flow pattern around the car. Then this car actually has some special features. Um, it has an air intake at the front. The air goes through the radiator and then exits at the side here. And then we can see that I had this design feature, this design line, which is going upward. I like that for the visual stance of the car and so on. Um, but that means the air which is coming out of this channel and actually across the bonnet and then tumbles down here uh, needs to cross this design feature. And this is actually causing flow separation. Um, so that's what you see here. So there's air actually tumbling down this edge and there's flow separation combined with the flow separation and turbulent air that you get off the wheels is actually a bad scenario. Then we have these inlet channels which uh, guide air in between the wheels and the motor compartment or the engine compartment um, and they exit into the wake. And it's really nice to see that the air which they feed into the wake really cuts out the wake because normally this is like one big red blob, a big red wake. Um, in this case, the wake is being reduced by this fresh air which is being fed into it from this channel, also from the bottom channel which is a double diffuser and this second layer channel which is actually entering here. But if you look at the surface friction for example, you can see that if you have low surface friction, 
This means that you either have stagnated airflow, like in these pockets of air or ahead of the radiator, they have low relative friction of the air versus the surface of the car. And you also have that when you have separated airflow. So when the air needs to let go behind the wheel, for example, and cannot follow this sharp curvature here, or the entire rear of the car, this is separated airflow. So it's entirely blue. And you also see this blue actually inside these channels. So I would actually have to optimize the shape of these channels quite a lot to maintain uh, attached airflow. I can also see that the flow separation coming off this part and also flow separation across this small edge here really translates all the way down to the end of the car uh, combined with flow separation across the rear windshield or moderate mild flow separation. This car is a sports car, so there's somewhat of a diffuser uh, integrated in the design. We discussed the flow reattachment here and there's quite a lot of attached airflow at the bottom of the car and we can see that the diffuser is working nicely especially the central part is getting a lot of attached flow nicely attached flow and high speed air which translates into a mild uh, suction effect here on the car but we can see that if you look at the wake around the wheels that there's a lot of spillover of the wake into the diffuser and this is actually reducing the performance and the local flows velocity in these outer parts of the diffuser. So it might be nice to optimize these or uh, provide some vertical shielding between the wheels and the, the wake of the car and the diffuser and so on. If we then want to understand how the air flows across the surface of the car, we can see that it's nicely attached all the way to the back. Um, we can move it to the sides, just understand that some of the air is going around the car, but then here it actually curls underneath the car and there's some swirl introduced uh, because this is not a straight face, it's a curved face, so the air will actually curve around it in a certain way. We can do the same with the horizontal streamlines, we can move them up and down uh, just to say, like let's say the silhouette. Uh, around the car. Um, if we move them all the way down, we can analyze the underfloor aerodynamics of the car in detail. You can see that the air is being uh, pushed inward uh, against the two tires. There's also some air actually going into these channels for the double diffuser, exiting here at the rear. So it's really interesting to see and to verify whether these things are working or not. We have a rough indication of wind noise here. So this is a steady state simulation using K Omega SST RANS. Um, as the solver. Now that means we don't have transient data there uh, to accurately capture or predict noise, but using an acoustic analogy, we can use the turbulent kinetic energy field to predict where the biggest sources of noise are located. These typically are located a bit further downstream compared to the energy losses of the turbulence. Um, because it's where the turbulence decays into noise energy, that's where you actually generate most of the noise. So it takes a bit of space actually or distance uh, to achieve this. If we model a radiator we can also click on the radiator and we can toggle between the velocity and the pressure. So you can see that there's quite a uniform distribution of the velocity through the radiator. It's also interesting to see that the effect of the grill is still felt on the radiator even though there's like a uh, a two, three, four inch distance or, or gap between the grill and the radiator, you can still feel this impact of the grill. We can also see that the average flow velocity is 12.3 meters per second, uh, which is quite a bit lower than the 180 or 50 meters per second that we set for the car itself. This is due to the pressure resistance and the flow rate, volumetric flow rate is also given um, as an output uh, of the simulation. Now it's really interesting because you can use these data points to just put them into the thermal model of your radiator um, and using the flow rate of your liquid cooling um, um, and the delta T, the pressure temperature, um, the, the temperature difference of your coolant and the flow rate of the air and the temperature of the air, you can actually calculate the cooling capacity, which is really useful. And then last but not least, we can also click on each individual part here. Uh, these parts are split automatically in AirShaper, so you don't need to set this up yourself. You can just analyze them individually to know how much drag is coming off the mirrors, for example, how much is generated by the wheels, um, by these small elements, and so on. If you really want to, you can also download the full simulation data and analyze that data using Paraview. Now, Paraview is an open source scientific result viewer uh, that you can install and just use uh, to analyze these results. Last but not least, you can also download the full simulation report, which summarizes most of the things that we've seen online, but there's a few extras in there, um, such as the number of cells that were applied during the simulation, the rotation, and so on. 
the frontal area is calculated automatically, um, the length, width and height of the car. The mesh is actually shown, so this is the actual CFD mesh. Um, so every detail you see here was actually part of the mesh which was used for the simulation. And this simulation includes adaptive mesh refinement, which means that the mesh is refined during the simulation locally where the flow is more complex based on the gradient of pressure and um, the vorticity in the flow. You get the drag force, the vertical force, down force hopefully, and lateral force, plus the pitch roll and yaw moments, the convergence is indicated, the drag coefficient is calculated, there's an estimate for the required power at this velocity and the drag force, and the aer aerodynamic balance is also calculated automatically. Um, because we know the position of the front wheels, the rear wheels, we can automatically calculate the split between downforce at the front and downforce at the rear. You'll see that in this case, there's a lot of downforce at the front, which is normal because of the downward slope of the front hood, for example, which acts like a, um, um, a wedge in, into the wind, but the rear generally uh, generates lift on most cars, actually. So that is something we would need to work on. And all of the other things are actually available all online. So that was it for the CFD analysis of this sports car. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button and drop a comment below or just get in touch if you want to run your own simulations. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.